check it out up there after this video is done of course all right let's just get right into the playing tips for etude number three page 25 from your Voxman book B flat minor like we did in my other TMEA video we have to ask ourselves two questions every time we prepare something for an audition question number one is why are they asking this question number two is where is the spot that everyone else is going to mess up so for question number one, why are they asking this? There are two different things they're looking for here. Number one is quite obvious. They're looking for the tempo. Compared to etude number two, which is nice and slow and lyrical, this piece is super fast. It just drives right ahead. We have 16th notes. They are looking for if you can play at a fast tempo cleanly and with clarity of articulation, right? They're looking if you can just drive right through this etude, if you can play with velocity, cleanliness, all of these things. This is really going to demonstrate your fast playing and that you have good technical facility on the trombone. That's what they're looking for. Going hand in hand with the tempo of this piece is the style marking that is directly underneath the first measure. So this word is a little harder to find than some of our others for the other etudes that are written in Italian. A lot of musical terms are written in Italian, but this one was in French. Not only was it written in French, but it's not even the whole word. It's just an abbreviation. So that made it even a little bit trickier to find. But I found it online and we're going to listen to the correct pronunciation here by our lovely, I like to call Google Sensei, Google teacher. <laughs> Google Translate is going to pronounce it for us. Légèrement. And that means lightly. So that will also give us an idea of how to perform this. We need a fast tempo and lightly. The second reason I think they are asking this etude is the key. So this isn't a key that maybe we don't see very much in our high school band, B flat minor. Maybe we haven't even played in this key yet. Certainly not a lot of high school band pieces are written in this key. But as you get out of high school, as you get out of the band world and venture into the professional world, you're going to see every single one of them. You know, if you start playing in orchestras, there's a lot of sharp keys there because you're playing with the string instruments. If you start playing in bands with guitar players, bass players, I guarantee you're going to be playing in the sharp keys a lot. If you are playing in a pit orchestra and playing in musical theater shows, oh my gosh, you might see all 12 keys over the course of one show or even in one tune with lots of key changes. If you start playing with singers, they're going to be wanting all these different keys and you got to adapt quickly. So this idea of we really need to start getting used to playing in all the keys and different keys. So use this as an opportunity to learn to play in B flat minor and learn what B flat minor sounds like. Learn how you can get all over this key. Scales, arpeggios, patterns, this etude. Take advantage of it. So the way I start off practicing keys is with a drone. I really like to think of a key as not just all these notes or these slide positions or these valve combinations. I like to think of it as a sound and really just think of each individual key as having its own distinct sound. So the first thing we're going to do is put on a drone. I'm using tonal energy right now. I'm going to set the drone on B flat and we're just going to go through really slow and play each note of the B flat minor scale. We're not worried about tempo here. We're not worried about velocity. What we're worried about is just each pitch really locking in and for you to find where each pitch lies on your horn.
to make adjustments with your slide while you're playing through this. Just go slow, think about the note, and try to find where it lies on your horn. The key here is we want to build consistency and like doing it really slow so we can train ourselves what these notes sound like, what these intervals sound like. And don't be afraid to do this all over the range of the instrument. You know, play the bottom octave of your scale, play the top octave, play back, up, down, all around. which shows up all over this piece. So after we go through do like a slow minor scale, a slow minor arpeggio. Now, another thing I like to do, it's kind of a little more fun, it just helps us get into the sound of the key, is we're gonna just improvise over this drone. So don't get too like heady with it, don't like freak out, just play through the slow style like we've been doing, slow notes, and just kind of make stuff up and get used to the sound of what this key sounds like. Just get really comfortable playing through it. number two where is that spot where everyone is gonna mess up I think the most difficult part is definitely the pickups to measure 28 through bar 31 in these few bars we have some challenging intervals many different articulation patterns we have accidentals thrown in here so it can be a particularly challenging section so I'm gonna show you now it's like my number one practice tip of how not only we can really key into these few bars here to this difficult spot making sure we're playing everything correctly but also it is how we are going to learn to play fast, which goes back to the question number one. What are they looking for? They're looking to see if you can play at a fast tempo. This is how you do it. I'm sure you've heard many people say this before, play slow or practice slow, but this is how you do it. It's actually very methodical. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this little chunk, pick up to bar 28, and we are going to start at half tempo. The suggested tempo marking for this piece was quarter note equals 88 to 98. So half tempo is 44 beats a minute. So it's pretty slow. So we're gonna start there, but by all means, if you need to start slower than that, go ahead. This is for you. It's okay to start super slow. You never want to play faster than you can play correctly. So here we go, 44 beats a minute. <laughs> bumping up the tempo. Once you get everything the way you want it, and I am talking right notes, right rhythms, correct articulations, um, any inflections that you want to put in the music, the dynamics, once everything is exactly the way you want it, play it three times correctly without any mistakes, and then you can bump up the tempo. If you want to get crazy and make sure it's super consistent, play it ten times in a row before bumping up the tempo. For today, I bumped up the tempo by 10 clicks each time, but by all means, when you're doing this in your individual practice, if 10 clicks is too much, do smaller increments. Bump it up by five clicks at a time, or two clicks at a time, or one click at a time, whatever you need to bring you successful reps. 
that is our goal here. We want continued successful repetitions so we can train our body, our ear, our arm, our trombone, everything to play this correctly as we get faster and faster. It does you no good to play faster than you can play correctly. <laughs> I hope you found these practice tips helpful. If you have any questions for me, please do not hesitate to reach out. You can leave me a comment down below or I am on every single social media platform at Lisa Liz Trombone. I also offer Zoom lessons. I'm teaching trombone lessons now on Zoom, so if you'd like to take a lesson, please get a hold of me. I will leave my lessons website information down in the description as well. If you haven't yet, go check out my video for etude number two, and I have a video for etude number one coming very soon. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I have a new video coming out every week, and I will see you soon. Good luck.